All right, welcome back to another adventure of the single guy. Today, it's gonna be some pesto. So it's not gonna be an overly complicated mix, but I saw this recipe, when was it? it wasn't too long ago on cooking channel. What was that called? Ah, food wishes. So I made it once and I was like, okay, that's good, but I'm gonna try to maybe improve on it a little bit and just go with what it is and see how it turns out. So enjoy. So it's about eight, clo uh, eight cloves of garlic to start with. Now I'm doing this uh, recipe off my memory here, just to make it interesting. Simple store-bought basil. It's nice and fragrant. It's going a little, little wilty, but I think we'll be fine. You know when they, uh, when you watch those food videos, there's always that editing time. You know they cut straight to the finished product. They don't tell you how much actual work goes into something like this didn't realize how much pounding you needed to do on the mortar and pestle in order to actually make it to break down the leaves and the garlic and everything like that so if you do this at home just remember it's a lot more work involved when it comes to doing this than what they show on those shows although it's definitely worth the wait You know, the first time I did this, I thought there was a lot more grinding action, you know, like this, but realizing that it's more of a pounding to break down these leaves. If you got kids who like to do, like to beat things up, just let them, let them at this and you know, you'll have your pesto done in no time. Yeah, these ones turned out a little wilty. I bought this last week or a week, so they've been sitting in the fridge for a bit. I overdid it the first time, I thought thought it needed three of these things and well uh, I only bought enough of the other ingredients for just uh, one so now I went back and bought some more ingredients made sure I got enough and make it away and, you know I do firmly believe that with the internet and stuff like that, we are living in the best times to learn how to cook. Anything you want to learn how to cook, barbecue, saute, French cooking, not French cooking, Asian, you can go online and there's some kind of nice quick tutorial that'll teach you how to do it. I mean, pesto, I used to have pesto, there's a restaurant in town that I love going to and uh, had awesome freaking chicken is what they called it but um, pesto sauce oh I loved it but never really figured that I would be able to do it on my own make the pesto sauce but I came across recipes and eventually I tried to make it myself I used a a food processor or a mini fruit po fruit food processor at one point in time and um, didn't turn out as well and then I saw this recipe from Food Wishes and was like 
I can do that because I have a mortar and pestle. We can, I can make my own. So last time wasn't too bad. This time, hopefully, it'll turn out a little bit better. Something I've found though, when it comes to cooking, why it's so awesome, it doesn't have to be perfect. I think people have this idea in their head that you gotta have, cooking has to be perfect, that whatever you cook has to be just right, like restaurant quality and stuff like that. But man, there's been so many times where I've completely foboshed a recipe. I remember a pork belly recipe, I spent $30 on the pork, rest, pork belly, way over salted it. We didn't even give the pork to the dog, we were, it was just too salty. So just give it a try, I mean you may fail a couple times, but it's part of the process when it comes to learning how to cook. There's no real wrong and you can't really ruin food, it's still edible and still nutritious. You know, it might not taste 100% right, but that's why you learn. I think people just get the idea in their head because they can't reproduce what a restaurant does, they can't make good food. That's the thing, take what's around you, or take what you can afford, what you can buy, you can make it pretty good, I mean, you can make vegetables into something awesome. That's what I like about cooking, you never know what, you, you never know what you're going to get sometimes. You can go into it following a recipe and the recipe never turned out because you didn't have all the ingredients the recipe had. So you improvise. So there was this recipe that there's another famous bloke on YouTube called Gordon Ramsay. Actually I think he's just a famous chef anyway. I followed one of his recipes and it called for Chipotle or something like that. And I could not find what he was calling for. Now, of course, he was British, so he, whatever it was, it was probably British whatever. Anywho, I went to my local Fred Meyers, couldn't find it, but I did find something, you know, similar-ish. So, I bought it, and it turned out really, really well, even though I wasn't following the recipe. I improvised, and man, that was some great sauce. And I still use that recipe, not his, but whatever, the one that I made up. Every time I make that pork butt. Just don't be afraid of it. It's always a great thing to learn how to cook, learn new things. I mean, if I, being a single guy, I'm learning how to make foods that are tasty, that are different. You can do it as well. People have got this like fear of the kitchen. It's easy to follow recipes. And that's where you start. That's why I'm doing this. This is a complete recipe from Chef John from Food Wishes. I'll link it below. And you know, as I'm doing this, I'm seeing things like, you know, I'm not getting all the stems completely, you know, check that out, not all completely mashed. But that's the thing, this isn't going to be like some kind of perfect thing like I get at that restaurant. It's going to be different, it's going to be my own thing. Right, people get this idea in their head that you have to make restaurant quality food at home. No, you have to make your own kind of food at home, it's your quality food. It's not this perfect, perfect dish where, you know, you've gone to a Cordon Bleu and spent way too much money on an education. No, you got educated on the, in the College of YouTube Food. All right. This is looking kind of mashed up good enough right now. Let's show the camera. See that? 
That's what it looks like. Right about there. Nice and pasted. Alright, but I have to admit that this next part, I've completely forgot how much cheese I need. So, if you'll excuse me, I will YouTube this. Ah! So, here we go. So, I'm doubling the recipe, so instead of three tablespoons pine nuts, I need six tablespoons pine nuts. Uh, let's take this off. Uh, got my pine nuts right here. pine nuts and then start mashing them in again there's also something about knowing where your food comes from and knowing that you can do it on your own making your own food it's simple, it's easy. Ah. A lot of pounding, well that looks good. Looks like most of the pine nuts are all mashed in. Pretty much all mashed in. Some of them missed and yeah, every time you can find them. It's like they're hiding. Pine nuts are hiding. So this is with all the pine nuts all mashed in. So let's put that off to the side because what I need next is this. And my handy dandy So, according to Chef John, you have to have authentic. Hold on, let me read this right. Parmigiano Reggiano. So, I have some Parmigiano Reggiano. I need four ounces. So, right. Very well. This is more... Uh, 
There we go. Okay, pro tip for you. If your Parmigiano Reggiano has the rind on it, it doesn't actually grade very well. Just FYI. So according to the recipe, I need four ounces of Parmigiano Reggiano. And that's four ounces. So what I'm gonna do with the extra, I'm gonna put the hunks of Parmigiano there. Tupperware and save it for a later day. But there you go. It's about what four ounces of Parmigiano Reggiano looks like. actually saw a video, of course on YouTube again, where they talked about how cheesemakers who make the Parmigiano Reggiano in Italy use their cheese as collateral because each wheel is roughly worth about $8,000. $8,000 is a lot of money for a cheese wheel, but considering the hand crafting that goes into making the cheese, it's not surprising. It's a lot harder when you double the recipe to actually get that all mixed in properly. I don't recommend doubling a recipe when you're using this thing. Okay, and now the last piece de resistance, actually, not really, but One cup of olive oil. This time I'm gonna mix it in with a with a fork. I think it'll make it easier. Alright, one cup, one cup, one cup. There we go. Oh no, I've run out of olive oil! Whatever shall I do? Oh wait, let's just open up some more. Ugh. Oh, come on. When in doubt, knife. When in doubt, no knife? Okay, come on. Not that hard of a recipe to follow, thanks to Chef John and foodwishes.com. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you like the video, like the video. Subscribe for more whenever I get them out and whenever I decide to, you know, make another video. But thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.